Jerome Bruner, Educational Psychology, 3203, by Jamie Corker. Jerome Seymour Bruner was born October 1, 1915, to Herman and Rose Bruner in New York City. Herman and Rose were Polish Jewish immigrants. Jerome Bruner was born blind due to cataracts, but had an operation at the age of two to restore his sight. His father died when he was 12, and his mother moved the family to Florida, where he attended a series of high schools. He received a bachelor's degree of psychology from Duke in 1937 and a master's in 1939. He received a doctorate from Harvard in 1941. Jerome Bruner died at the age of 100 on June 5, 2016. Dr. Bruner met his first wife while studying at Harvard, Catherine Frost. The marriage ended in divorce, as did his second marriage to Blanche Marshall McLean. His third wife, Harold Fieldman, died before him. He had a partner, Eleanor Fox. He had two children, a daughter, Jane Bruner Mullane, and a son, Whitley Bruner. Jerome Bruner was an American psychologist who made a significant contribution to human cognitive psychology and cognitive learning theory in educational psychology. Bruner was a senior research fellow at the New York University School of Law. A review of General Psychology Survey published in 2002 ranked Bruner as the 28th most cited psychologist of the 20th century. During World War II, Bruner served on the Psychological Warfare Division under the command of General Dwight D. Eisenhower, researching social psychological phenomenon. Beginning in 1940s, Jerome Bruner, along with Leo Postman, worked on the ways in which needs, motivations, and expectations influence perception. They explored perception from a functional orientation. Bruner also started to look at the role of strategies in the development of human cognition. This propelled him to have a particular interest in the cognitive development of children and what the appropriate forms of education might include. In the 1950s, Bruner became interested in schooling in the USA. He was an influential part of the design and implementation of the influential MACOS Man, a course of study project, which was curriculum focused on three questions. What is uniquely human about human beings? How did they get that way? And how could they be made more so? Around 1960, Jerome Bruner developed a theory of cognitive growth. His approach looked to environmental and experiential factors. Bruner suggested that intellectual ability developed in stages through step-by-step -step changes in how the mind is used. Bruner's thinking became increasingly influenced by writers like Lev Gotsky. In the early 1970s, Bruner left Harvard to teach for several years at the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. There, he continued his research and started a series of explorations of children's language. He returned to Harvard as a visiting professor in 1979, and then two years later joined the faculty of the New School for Social Research in New York City. He became critical of the cognitive revolution and began to argue for the building of a cultural psychology. This cultural turn was then reflected in his work on education, most especially in his 96th book, The Culture of Education. Jerome S. Bruner had a profound effect on education and upon those researchers and students he has worked with. Howard Garner has commented, Jerome Bruner is not merely one of the foremost educational thinkers of the era, he is also an inspired learner and teacher. His infectious curiosity inspires all who are not completely jaded. Individuals of every age and background are invited to join in. Logical analysis, 
technical dissertations, rich and wide knowledge of diverse subject matters, asides to an ever wider orbit of information, intuitive leaps, pregnant enigmas pour forth from his indefatigable mouth and pen. In his words, intellectual activity is anywhere and everywhere, whether at the frontier of knowledge or in a third grade classroom. To those who know him, Brunner remains the complete educator in the flesh. The essence of creativity is figuring out how to use what you already know in order to go beyond what you already think. Cognitive Psychology Brunner is one of the pioneers of cognitive psychology in the U.S., which began through his own early research on sensation and perception as being active rather than passive processes. Brunner and Postman performed a variety of experiments issued in what some called the New Look Psychology, which challenged psychologists to study not just an organism's response to stimulus, but also its internal interpretation. After these experiments on perception, Brunner turned his attention to the actual cognitions that he had indirectly studied in his perception studies. In 1956, Brunner published this book, a study of thinking which formally initiated the study of cognitive psychology. Soon afterward, Brunner helped found the Harvard Center of Cognitive Studies. In the lectures of Acts of Meaning, Brunner refuted the computer model for studying the mind, advocating a more holistic understanding of the mind and its cognitions. Developmental and Educational Theories Beginning in 1967, Brunner turned his attention to the subject of developmental psychology and studied the way children learn. He coined the term scaffolding to describe the way children often build on the information they have already mastered. In his research on the development of children, Brunner proposed three modes of representation. Inactive representation, which is action-based. Iconic representation, image-based. And symbolic representation, language-based. Rather than neatly delineated stages, the modes of representation are integrated and only loosely sequential as they translate into each other. Symbolic representation remains the ultimate mode for it clearly the most mysterious of the three. Brunner's theory suggests its efficaciousness when faced with new material to follow a progression from an active to iconic to symbolic representation. Brunner's work also suggests that a learner of any age is capable of learning any material so long as the instruction is organized appropriately. This is a sharp contrast to the beliefs of John Piaget, another stage theorist. Educational While Brunner was at Harvard, he published a series of works about his assessment of current educational systems and ways that education could be improved. In 1961, he published the book Process of Education. Brunner wrote in the Process of Education that knowing how something is put together is worth a thousand facts about it. Brunner sought to develop a complete curriculum for the educational system that would meet the needs of students in three main areas which he called man, a course of study. Brunner was also credited with helping found the Head Start Early Child Care Program. Spiral Curriculum Brunner proposed spiral curri curriculum, a teacher approach in which each subject or skill area is revisited at intervals at a more sophisticated level each time. First, there is basic knowledge of a subject, then more is added, reinforcing principles that were first discussed. This system is now used in China and India. Brunner's spiral curriculum, however, draws heavily from evolution to explain how the learner to learn better, and thus it drew criticism from conservatives. Brunner believed students must play an active role in their own learning. Brunner agreed with Piaget on several things. However, he disagreed just the same. Brunner agreed that 
Children are pre-adapted to learning. They have a natural curiosity. Children's cognitive structures develop over time. Children are active participants in their learning process. Cognitive development entails the acquisition of symbols. Bruner disagrees with Piaget that development is a continuous process, not a series of stages. The development of language is a cause, not a consequence of cognitive development. You can speed up cognitive development you don't have to wait for the child to be ready. The involvement of adults and more knowledgeable peers makes a big difference. Piaget's books, A Study of Thinking, published in 1956, The Process of Education, 1960, Studies in Cognitive Growth, 1996, Toward a Theory of Instruction, 1966, Processes of Cognitive Growth, Infancy, 1968, Beyond the Information, Given, Studies in the Psychology of Knowing, 1973, On Knowing, Essays for the Left Hand, 1979, Child's Talk, Learning to Use Language, 1983, In Search of Mind, Essays in Autobiography, 1983, Actual Minds, Possible Worlds, 1985, Four World, 1987, Acts of Meaning, 1990, The Culture of Education, 1996, Minding the Law, 2000, Making Stories, Law, Literature, Life, 2003. One seeks to equip the child with deeper, more gripping, and subtler ways of knowing the world and himself. Jerome Seymour Bruner Works Cited Page Thank you for watching and have a great day.